and welcome everybody to this Quiet Mind Poetry. Um, as Anne said, I'm a, a poet. I'm also a, an author as well. And I work in human resources. Um, I that helps me to feel my poetry as well, working with people, which has been absolutely great. Um, I've asked everyone to bring a piece of nature with them today for this Quiet Mind Poetry, and I'm hoping that everybody has. If you need to go and get a piece of nature, then by all means, you can do that now. If you need to get a glass of water, um, you can do that now as well, because what I want for is for everyone to be really immersed in this moment with the poetry, so you don't have to maybe change your focus um, to something else. So if you haven't got a glass of water or a piece of um, nature, by all means, um, please feel free to, to, to get that now. Is everyone okay? Yep, are we sounding yes? <laughs> Wonderful. So poetry and creativity, I feel are one of the same. And in order for poetry or creativity to flow, we need to make sure that we're not holding any tension within us. When we're tense, our focus tends to be quite restrictive, constrained, and we don't get the best out of ourselves in those moments. So even before we begin the poetry, what I'd like you to do, if you have pen and paper with you, is to replay, a bit of revision, replay what you've done so far today. So from this moment here to when you woke up this morning, if you can just write all that down. You don't need to go into the detail. You just need to capture it. You don't need to attach any emotion to it. Just, just in reverse, just write down everything that you've done from this moment until the point that you woke up this morning, just so we can lift anything, any baggage, any luggage from our mind so we can really get into the poetry today. And let me know by a show of hands that... Um, that you're, that you're finished. Thank you. Right, so hopefully you've offloaded everything. I sometimes, I feel it's a bit like a shopping bag. We go through the day, we've collected bits and pieces in there, and then we start putting some more shopping in before we've taken the previous day's shopping out. So that's why I prefer that if we offload everything, it gives us that fresh mindset and that focus of attention. And also to ensure that there is no tension left in our bodies, I'd like for you all to do a body scan, um, starting at your toes. I often feel that it's a bit like a hose pipe. No matter how much you turn that hose pipe on, if there's a kink in the hose, that water will never ever get through. And it's a bit like our creative, our create our creativity. So if you can just take a moment to relax and maybe close your eyes and I'll talk you through this, if that's okay with everybody, or even just turn your screen off for a moment while I talk you through it. If you don't want to close your eyes, that'd be fine. I'll close mine while I'm saying it though. <laughs> so take a nice deep breath, a real belly breath. And then scan your toes. Are they clenched in your shoes? And maybe if you're wearing something off your, on your feet, maybe take them off so your toes can breathe and your feet can stretch and your ankles can be free. Are you holding any tension in your calves or in your knees? And if they are, just relax and, I, and allow your hips to relax when your knees relax as well. Take another breath and allow your stomach, your tummy to relax. So you're not clenching or holding in those muscles. Let them breathe. Another breath to help you relax your shoulders and your arms. Another breath to help you relax your neck and your chest. Another breath to help you relax your jaw so it's not clenched, it's nice and it's relaxed and there's no tension in there. Another breath to relax our tongue. Another breath to relax our face and the muscles and really feel the tension float away from your forehead. Another breath to help you relax the top of your head so it becomes really expansive. 
And with another breath, just shake out your arms and your hands. And when you're ready, just open your eyes again. How are you all? Good. Beautiful. So now that we've relaxed, I'd like you to think about the piece of nature that you've brought with you today. And for those of you with your screens on, if we can take it in turns to put that piece of nature to your camera and describe it using all your senses. So the texture, the feel, maybe the smell to it. Um, maybe there's the, the weight of it. There may be even be a, a memory that it evokes for you. So if we start with, um, let's start with Helen. Let's start with Helen, that's okay. Your piece of nature. So I have two conkers from my garden. Uh, we have two horse chestnut trees in our garden and it's quite a small garden. So that's an interesting challenge. <laughs> but the point about conkers is I love them. And even when I'm going for a walk, I always pick them up when I see them on the ground because I just love holding them. So I love the texture of holding them. I love how they're skin or seed coat is a lovely glossy dark brown, how they feel smooth and slippery to the touch. And then there's the, the scar that's a rougher material. And they're quite light. They're lighter, I think, than you would expect them to be. Uh, they're lighter, for example, than if they were stones that were this kind of size. And I just often feel it's quite relaxing and quite, I don't know, therapeutic just to have some conkers in my pocket and then I can just put my hands in and feel the conkers or hold the conkers when I'm walking along. So I guess a little bit like a stress toy. Um, not that I'm particularly stressed when I'm walking, well, sometimes I am, but not always, but I just like the feel of them. They don't smell of that much. These ones have been at home for a while and they don't really have a smell that I can perceive. Wonderful, thank you for sharing that. And Lucy, what did you bring with you today for nature? You're, you're on mute. Sorry. <laughs> right, thank you. Yeah, it's an apple. <laughs> so yeah, and I, what I like about it, it's nice and solid, and it's um, it's actually not that heavy. And uh, I like the stripes. I like the the the, the red and the stripes, the red and green stripes in there. That's what I like best about it, the stripes on all of it, actually. And then the, the smell, strangely, it doesn't smell that apple-y because it's like a supermarket apple and it's quite a cheap one. <laughs> and to be honest, when you grow apples and you get apples from an apple tree, you know, they can actually smell a lot stronger. So that's, that's uh, my apple there. That's all I can say about it. And can I just ask about the, the pattern on the inside, if, there's, if you can maybe describe the pattern that you cut it in half, the description of the pattern inside it? Yeah, it's just because it's, it's now sort of segmented it so that it's not one thing anymore, but it's like, it looks like two things. It's like a little butterfly, but, um, and then the little, the little hiding place for the seeds. Mm that they're kind of hidden in there, which is quite nice. And uh, yeah. And then the, the little bit there that you can see at the, at the bottom, you can see the, uh, where, the, where the flower was. That's another little hidden, 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 hidden little place in there. So yeah, that's, that's it. 
wonderful. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you. It's amazing how much we can find in nature from one thing, but it can actually, from there, there is so much more that it has to offer us. And I think this is the same as yeah. poetry, maybe poetry, but beyond the formula, beyond the one thing that it is, there's so much more and that can come from it. Um, example with, with the apple and the seeds and the apple blossom. So there's signs and there's history there. And also with the conkers, it's therapeutic. Um, the shape, the size, and no doubt each one of them, even though they're all one of the same, they're quite unique in, in themselves. So maybe those two conkers aren't exactly the same size or even shape and the bumps may be different as well. So it's, it's actually quite amazing. And Maria, would you like to describe your piece of nature to us? Well, I've got a little acorn, um, an acorn seed. I'm very excited that I've learned that the, the little cup is called a cupule. So that's still very bumpy and, and it's the, the acorn seed is it's round and brown and um, it's got a little bobbly bit at the top. And I quite like how it's just very cute, it's just sitting in its little, in little cupule and feel like it, it belongs there. It's lovely. Is there any scent to it or does it smell of nature if that can be a, a possibility? <laughs> it, it smells, it smells very nutty, nutty. I feel like a squirrel. I feel like a squirrel that just wants to munch into it. I won't, but it just, it smells lovely. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. And Julie, could you describe your piece of nature that you've brought with you today? Um, two conkers. I've just, I found two conkers today and they're really shiny and um, they look like amazing pieces of varnished walnut. <laughs> Aside from saying conker size, <laughs> Um, they sort of fit in the palm of my hand. If I sort of close my hand, it, it sort of fits in the palm of my hand. Thank you. Thank you for that. So what I'd like you all to do, now that you've opened up the, your, um, been able to describe your piece of nature, hopefully that's opened up your poetic voice at the same time as well. And I'd like you to write three sentences. They don't need to be long or complex. They can be, some of them could be one word, but different different sentences have now come to your mind now that we've spoken about nature and it could be anything at all whatever comes through for you just just write it down so I'll do whilst you're still writing so the purpose of writing that down writing your thoughts down as soon as you've spoken about your piece of nature as I said is to open up the creative juices and with that, you find that you may be writing something that's maybe more poetic or you write in it from a more innate, innate place. So that allows us then to create a piece of poetry and that will be combined with somebody else within the group today as well. So what will happen, we're gonna put you into breakout rooms. Before we do that, I'll just explain the purpose of that exercise. And you'll share the piece of writing, um, piece of writing with each other and then you'll decide between you how you're going to um, arrange that into a piece of poetry. You may decide that one line fits better with another line or one sentence fits better with another sentence or even part of that sentence. And if you can give it a title, uh, arrange it together and really get to know each other and why you've chosen to write the sentences you've had, you have, and then arrange that into a piece of poetry, um, practice, reciting that poetry each, each practice reciting that. And then when you come away from the breakout rooms, we'll then hear each of you recite that piece of poetry. And then if we have enough time, we'll do a whole recital of both poems um, from everybody as, as a group, just take a line each or two lines each, but we'll see how far we're in once I've heard them first time round. So if you can go into the breakout rooms and I'll pop in and out to see how you're all getting on. Thank you, Anne. Welcome back, everyone. Can we take it in turns just to go, before we recite the poetry, just to talk about how the exercise was for you? So if we start with yourself, Lucy, that's okay? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit, um... It's a bit difficult to start, and then, but then when we, when we get started, we, we're not finished. <laughs> it's like uh, you get into a run of it, and then you you have to, you start um, 
coming up with ideas and then you start thinking how it can fit and then you think oh it's going to be really good look they've got these two things coming together but we haven't quite worked it all out quite okay but you've got something there though oh yeah yeah we're nearly there right okay wonderful another another 10 minutes <laughs> and helen how was that for you that exercise I really enjoyed it and we found it relatively easy because we had conkers and acorns mm. so we realized straight away that we had that similarity because we both had autumn seeds so we thought well what have we got that's the same and what is it that's different about them and how can we tie it all together and we just did so I really enjoyed it yeah it was good and Julie how was that for you um, like Lucy said, we were getting into a great sort of rhythm and then we ran out of time. So I, I think we've both got different things written down. <laughs> well, at least you have something to share, yeah. which is good. And, and there's no formula in regards to um, how you're supposed to recite that piece. So you can you can okay. recite it in any in any which way you want. Yeah. Thank you. And Maria, how was that exercise for you? Oh, that was an absolute honour. It was it was such it was so nice to collaborate with somebody else and, and to share the ideas. And, and when we were working on it together, um, it just gave me goosebumps. It was just so lovely, just so wonderful. Thank you for that opportunity, so well. Right, thank you. So now's the recital. <laughs> I don't have any music in the background, but we can imagine that we're warming up and um, we're about to hear a wonderful piece or two wonderful pieces. And who would like to go um, first? Maybe you'll we'll stagger it. So one person from the first group, then the second, and then the first and the second again. So who would like to go um, first? Oh, Helen and Maria both want to go first. <laughs> Maria, do you want to go first? Okay. Helen can go first. Helen can go first. Helen, all right. Then you've been nominated. Thank you. I just thought one of us should go first because we thought that ours is finished where the other group's mm -hmm. still finishing off. <laughs> <laughs> Autumn seeds, acorns and conkers, the currency of our future. This is not just a seed. It is a heart inside a hand. It's a pearl within a shell. It's a dream above the clouds. Seeds create comforting feelings in my hands. From the decomposition and decay of autumn, new lives will be generated and mighty trees will grow. Seeds of the autumn hand in hand, the acorn and the conquer. Wonderful, wonderful. So descriptive, it gave this really powerful image. Um, like life decay, but also life and decay, even though it's like quite oxymoronic, but it's still, it's beautiful in the same, very strong. That was wonderful, very strong. If I, Lucy, are you okay to recite yours? Yeah, all right, yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Helen, thank, thank you. Um, okay, shared joy to be outdoors. So fresh, summer flowers all gone. Flush of pink in cheeks pink stripes against the green. Watching the pup smile, swelling and growing behind lost flowers, hiding inside small dark seeds, anticipating the con conquer tree. <laughs> Crunchy flesh waiting to be eaten, shiny conkers waiting to be chosen, shared joys outdoors, happy to be walking too. <laughs> it's a little bit, uh, needs a little bit polishing there, I think. <laughs> That's the thing with poetry. You, I always say real poetry is your own voice. It doesn't have to be filled with formulas and structures that stifle you from saying what you really want to say from your heart or from your, from your gut. So um, absolutely beautiful imagery, you know, crunchy flesh. Was it crunchy flesh? I think that stood out for me. Um, but you imagine it's very <laughs> awesome, people playing outdoors. Um, very light and, and, and very hearty as well. So what wonderful piece, wonderful. So then Maria and, and Judy, so um, Maria, would you like to recite? Okay. Autumn Seeds. 
acorns and conquers, the currency of our future. This is not just a seed, it is a heart inside a hand. It is a pearl within a shell. It is a dream above the clouds. Seeds create comforting feelings in my hands. From the decomposition and decay of autumn, new lives will be generated and mighty trees will grow. Seeds of the autumn, hand in hand, the acorn and the conquer. That's brilliant, isn't it? That is brilliant, that poem. You couldn't see me, but I was doing actions while I was doing it as well, because I work with children, so I would do the actions with them. It's just lovely. Thank you, Helen, for that. Brilliant. I was, you, you both shared the same piece of poetry. You both recited it in your own unique voices. Helen, I saw this, you know, this strength. And with Maria, I saw someone actually holding my hand and walking me through the poem and the scenery. I don't know, what did everybody else think? Yeah, it was different. He saw it differently. I, it, with, when Maria did it, I saw the, all of the opposites all the way down, these like opposites. Maybe it's because I've heard it again and it, uh, I remember it. Yeah, it was definitely picked out different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonderful. It's funny because when I heard, because I was reading it, it's a different feeling to hearing it. So when Helen was reading it, I could see it. I couldn't see it when I was doing it, but I could see it because I was hearing it, if that makes any sense. It does, it does. Beautiful. And Julie, would you like to recite your, your piece now? Um, so this was the shared piece with Lucy. Like I say, we've got different sequences, but I'll just literally write where I've got. Mm -hmm. um, seeds waiting inside. It was great to be on my walk today. A flush of pink in my cheeks. Pink stripes against the green, shiny red. Watching my pup smile, happy to be on his walk too. Swelling and growing behind the lost flowers, a shared joy outdoors. And that's it. Wow. And straight away- That's that really nice. Sorry. Round of applause. It's just, it was absolutely, absolutely wonderful, wonderful, um, Julie, in the sense that I just, again, carried through the autumn. The theme of autumn naturally is, is, is there, but you just imagine that beautiful scenery, that, that nature in the, in the poetry. Um, absolutely, absolutely beautiful. And all, you know, same poetry, different voices, and they create a different scene and a different feel and all beautifully done through a piece, for bringing a little piece of, of nature in as well and your own poetic voices. I mean, I was hoping that we could make one recital, but I'm conscious that we, we, do, we do finish um, in about um, five, five minutes. Um, but I don't know if any of you are connected and you want to maybe finish your poetry together as two people, by all means, that's something that you maybe want to do off, offline, but thank you so, so much um, for being part of this, um, this workshop. I think it's, um, it'd be wonderful if we could hold up our piece of nature to the camera. Right, wonderful, that looked amazing. <laughs> I looked absolutely wonderful on there. Oh, brilliant. Oh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Savelle. It was absolutely wonderful. It was a lovely experience. And I wouldn't have believed if somebody had said to me, oh, go and write a poem about autumn, I would have said, no. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Helen. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, thank you all for sharing your poetry, sharing your words. Um, thank you for giving your time and hopefully you've taken something away from that, which it sounds like you have. And uh, I look forward to reading the pieces as, as well. Yeah, so thank you.